Here we are on the starting grid for this weekend's Ferrari Challenge race at Brands Hatch. And this weekend they're racing on the Indy track, which is the shorter circuit. They look friendly at the moment, but after qualifying, things are going to get real when the lights go out on that gantry. And this track may only have five corners. That does not mean it's straightforward. The great thing about Brands Hatch is it's got so much personality. It's a character. It's an incredible roller coaster ride up and down Dale. So very different to your modern Grand Prix circuits that are really flat like a billiard table. But this place has got a soul and a personality. And even the straights here aren't entirely straight. You have to kind of line yourself up in the middle of the track there and creep towards the left to line yourself up for this first corner and the critical braking into Paddock Hill Bent. So this is where it all happens for Paddock Hill Corner. You've got this three, two, one countdown on the brakes and you come in here, it's kind of over a crest that's slightly blind to begin with. You don't really know what you're in for until you hit that pedal, it's a massive test of confidence. And you brake incredibly late here. You basically brake in the corner. The curvature is already starting to take you into the right-hander. That's quite spooky because normally you're trying to brake in a straight line, but you've got no choice but to brake on the curve. And the turn-in point is way down there. You can just about see where it says exit. It's basically the last chance saloon. You either turn there or you're into the gravel and then the wall. So it's a blind entry. And this is what you see after you turn the wheel. The track reveals itself and it plunges down to the right. There's a massive elevation change and that causes the rear to lighten. So you want a bit of that rotation towards the apex. If you overcook it and the tail gets loose, you've got very little time to deal with it before the track drops again into this massive plunge and a huge compression at the bottom with very little runoff. There's very little space here because you straddle this red and white curve. You make the most of all the space. If you drop a wheel into this gravel, it pulls you in and you end up landing where that patch is over there where somebody ditched it into the gravel earlier today. You can see all these scratches from where the car's belly out, hits you straight in the arse, you're on full power, full compression, and then you shoot up the hill to brake very, very late into the Druid's hairpin. This is the braking area for Druid's hairpin. It's uphill, which means you can brake incredibly late. Gravity helps you slow down. And the braking mark for most cars is this bridge here but it's blind, you just arrive and suddenly have to hit the brakes incredibly hard. And conventional racing theory, stuff you get taught at the racing school, is that you would stay on the left-hand side and lengthen the curvature to try and carry as much speed through the corner as you can. That is not how you take this corner. You dive straight in for the apex, you steal space and time, and you make a faster lap time as a result. This track to the left is completely redundant because you've already turned into the corner. You make a big commitment and you slam the car over this curve, stealing every single inch of space you can. So rather than taking a conventional line, long trailing apex, you dive in, you make a V shape, swing the car around and then get hard on the power. And that's how you get good traction on the exit. It's a short, sharp shoot down the hill here towards Graham Hill corner, the crooked braking area. So you really have to square the car off, make your own straight, stamp the brake pedal and turn very aggressively and basically hit every curve in sight to make the maximum exit out onto the next back straight. Just remember when it breaks traction, there's a variety of ways this can go wrong. This corner is called Surtees. It's probably my favorite corner at Brands Hatch and it really sorts the men out from the boys. And in lighter cars or smaller cars with less power, you can just about take it flat out. In the Ferrari, there's no way that's gonna happen. When they get here with so much speed, we'll have to lift or touch the brakes. Despite the fact that you go into this left-hander at incredible speed in fifth gear and the car is absolutely on tiptoes, you still manage to whack it up onto that curb with half the car and not spin out. It somehow magically glues to the curb, puts the weight onto the outside wheels and you get the hammer down from the apex, finally to brake up into the last corner at Clearways. Track splits here, turn left to go onto the Grand Prix circuit and have a wonderful time. Today we're on the Indy circuit and the key thing is to Try and keep the car in the middle of the road, not to wash out too far, too wide, too soon. To do that, you really can't brake and make the car stable for the critical corner and entry into clearways, because you need to get out of clearways well to get a good run onto the pit straight. The racing line for clearways is here on the left-hand side. If you follow that line on the first lap of a race and someone's close behind you, you can guarantee they will slip up your inside and completely ruin your day, because you'll be offline for the critical run onto the straight and you'll probably get two, three, four more cars past you as you cry your eyes out past the team. So you can see the uphill entry to clearways. So whatever you think is a sensible approach speed, add 10 miles an hour and the hill will take it. 
you end up in the middle of the corner off everything off the brakes carrying in the speed into the apex as the track drops away goes off camber on the way out and you're on the power there squeezing the throttle staying out of the gravel then you're onto the home straight that's a lap of brands indy <laughs>